Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Western Pennsylvania and Heinz Field in the Steel City of Pittsburgh. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. And they're all set as they'll match up with the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a guy who made a Pro Bowl in his second season, James Conner. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. On second down, Connor looking for space. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. Couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. On first and 10 is Connor. The linebacker, Preston Brown, brings him down. Nice. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Here Three here yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. So we got man, man, man. Here's Dobbs to throw. That'll be taken in there by James Washington. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 39. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Out of the shotgun, they'll run with Connor. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. To throw on third down, Dobbs. And a throw there going to be incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Alex Erickson deep for Cincinnati. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to, like a good golfer can check one up. Now Dalton with a first and 10. That's complete. Bernard. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So here's Dalton and the Bengals now, first and 10 at their own 24. Off the play fake to Mixon. This is Dalton. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, 
you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. This is Joe Mixon, fourth in the NFL in rushing last season. And once again, not much running room, if any at all. There to stop him, Terrell Edmonds. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. He'll have a first down past the 40, and he'll finally be taken down just shy of midfield. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. So that's what that elbow in my ribs was all about. You thought they were going to throw the ball as well. Absolutely. I think everybody thought they were throwing the football. Caught him off guard. Yeah, I'm telling you, when you have the courage to make that type of a play call, a lot of times you actually get rewarded. Dalton, first and 10. Pressure, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back right around the 44. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. Hindsight is 2020, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. So after the sack, they'll come up on a still manageable second and 13. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. And it looks like a pickup of six. That leaves him with seven yards to go on third down. All right, Brandon, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? It's Connor as they stay on the ground. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going, and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. The Steelers picking up 15 yards there at a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Back to throw Dobbs. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down, the offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Back to the air on second down. Dobbs. And he connects with Vance McDonald. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 15 yards on the play, first down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. On play action, it's Dobbs. And his throw here is incomplete. Vance McDonald, the tight end, was the target. And that'll bring up second down. 
By the way, I got to apologize because I just realized for about the last four or five plays, I'm eking over into your territory up here in the booth. My bad. I'm going to get back over to my spot. Yeah, we're not talking about our on-air commentary. I mean, what is all this extra paper? I mean, this is unusual for you. My bad. Normally, you run a really tight ship. What's going on here? Just like that incomplete pass, I'm going to try to tighten things up here for this next play. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. 12 yards there and a first down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. They'll run on first down. Connor, and he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. From the gun, a give to Connor. And this carry not as productive. He swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at him. And he finds McDonald. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Looking to throw again on second down. Dobbs, and that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. From four yards out as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. This has to be great for the psyche of this offense. Presented with bad field position, they didn't let it stop them. They rolled downfield and scored a touchdown. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Cincinnati getting the ball back here. Yeah, we discussed what Andy Dalton did week one against Seattle. Now, they didn't have A.J. Green. Joe Mixon missed much of the game, Charles. He exited with an ankle injury. John Ross, though, was excellent at wide receiver. Boy, was he ever. Would you say there's been a sighting of John Ross? Because his rookie year, there was discussion about him going back to his first position in college, which was cornerback. 
But in this game, he's announced he's going to stay at receiver. Seven catches, 158 yards, two touchdowns. His previous high in his career, three catches for 52 yards. John Ross breaks out. Felt comfortable back in the state of Washington. Remember, he was a Washington Husky in college. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Throwing, Dalton. Throw left side, complete. That's Boyd. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Andy Dalton looked good on that pass, but I'll tell you what, all time in his career against Pittsburgh, it has been a struggle. Three and 12 as a starter against the Steelers. Just more evidence of their dominance over the years in the AFC North. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven to throw here. Dalton looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Boyd. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Play fake. Here's Dalton. Airing one out for Boyd. Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Sean Davis with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. On second down now, it's Connor. And he's able to get this across the 10 before being taken down. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So a little more space to work with here from the 13 on first and 10. Right back to Connor here on first. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. In this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. It was Nick Vigil there on the stop. On any running play this call, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. That's it. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Let's go now. Let's get it together, defense. Let's get it together. On third and two. Dobbs, throw left side complete. That's Connor. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. A nice first down pickup on a gain of six. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. 
And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. Now a draw play, this is Connor. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain that time, but it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. On third down, Dobbs. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Geno Atkins got home that time. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try and move the football. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Throwing again on second down. Dalton. Oh, the rookie nearly had the pick. Probably should have had it. Third down now. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Dalton gives to Bernard. He finds an opening past the 40 and all the way up to the 45-yard line. A Bengal first down on the 16-yard pickup there. Obviously an important run to avoid the three and out on your own side of the field. Shows a lot of faith in that offensive unit, doesn't it? That you want to run the ball in that situation. Pick up the first down. Also helps out your defensive guys a little bit too. Allows them to get at least one more series of downs in order to get some rest. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Boyd. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Pass complete, but no gain. No yards. Yeah. So you file that as unsuccessful. Yeah, you do, don't you? Except on the stats, throwing the ball. Get a completion. You get a catch. Yeah. But still, no yardage. Okay. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. On the screen, Bernard. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series, before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Throwing again. Dalton throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. His big tight end, Tyler Eifert, the intended receiver. And it's third down. 
So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. That is caught at the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, got stronger. But the best part about him is he's always been accurate. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Here's Dalton. And they're not able to hook up there, incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet, flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? And Dalton to throw. This will be caught at about the five. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Able to hold him to just two yards, and now it's fourth and goal. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Bullock's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13 play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Earlier, Charles, you and I talked about Pittsburgh's rough start to the season, that 33-3 loss to New England. And you mentioned it's not going to get any easier with a schedule coming up. What's next? They're home against Seattle? Yeah, home against Seattle. That's a monster game for them after what happened against New England. And I think they'll be ready, and they will play much better. Then they've got at San Francisco and their improved defense. Then division games against Cincinnati and Baltimore. So, no, the schedule doesn't get easier. But I really think you've got to circle the San Francisco game because that's the one that will get overlooked. And that'll be very difficult because San Francisco is going to have a good team this year. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. They'll run here with counter. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. A short gain of just over two yards as the first half clock dips inside of three minutes. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. 
Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side. Maybe a little gas. Right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Come on, fellas. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Dalton now to pass. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Tyler Boyd, the former Pitt Panther, was the target. But it'll be second down. Well, normally you and I would have gone through our season predictions before week one, but Hurricane Dorian prevented us from doing that last week. So let's go ahead and hear them. Your division winners and then the Super Bowl. Okay, let's start in the AFC. New England in the east. Bowl. Tennessee in the south. Pittsburgh in the north in Kansas City out west. Okay, so I'm with you on three of the four, but I'm going to go with a way too strong week one reaction and give Baltimore the edge in the north. Oh, I like that okay. one. All right, let's go NFC. All right. I'm going Philadelphia in the east, New Orleans in the south, Minnesota in the north, and the Los Angeles Rams out west. Okay, so I got two okay. different ones. I'm going to go good. Dallas on the east, and then I'm going to go Green Bay in the north. The right. reason I didn't go Dallas, there hasn't been a repeat winner in the east since 2003-2004. So okay. with... And he held on to it too long. A coverage sack. Down he goes. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the fair catch is taken at about the 13-yard line here. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. The drive will start with Connor. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Second and three. Dobbs completes it to Moncrief, left side. A gain of five, good That's enough for the first down. On first down, Dobbs to throw. And McDonald here over the middle. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Dobbs. Washington with a catch. Middle of the field. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Four yards the pick up. First down. Here 
And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! So time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead, and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game, yet they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. Now they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. That throw good for four. It's second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Now Bernard. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Seven yards there and a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Out of the gun. It's Dalton. To the left side here for Eifert. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. So Dalton now. The throw caught by Cole. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. On first down, Bernard. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Again, here's Bernard. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it, Brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. To throw on third down, Dalton. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And they've got another first and 10 as the penalty keeps this drive moving. Dalton operating in the red zone now. And he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. 
Here's Dalton. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. Bud Dupree, credit him with a sack as he buries him for a loss of 10. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So the sack, and now it's third and long for Dalton and the Bengals. Dalton here from the gun. This will be caught just inside the 10. And they will get to him at the 7 and stop him short of the first down marker. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air. Because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. And Bullock will put this one through. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They start with a give to Connor. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. To the right side and complete to Washington. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Nice hit, boy. And defensively, a dime look here. Six DBs on third and 12. No surprise at all. From the shotgun, here's Dobbs. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Carlos Dunlap, the Florida Gator, chopping his way to the quarterback. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. Here comes Erickson. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Bengals will take over in terrific field position. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. They're not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. John Ross, 49 yards, and the Bengals have taken the lead. And there he went quite a ways just to catch that ball. He started out lined up out to the right, caught it on the left side of the field. So what does that tell us? That there was tremendous protection on that play. Because that's not going to happen very fast to be able to. Now he's hit, and Dalton lost the football.
Now Bullock will send this one away after the touchdown. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Well, with that incompletion, I want to get some early season predictions from you because I love to do that, and I like to hold <laughs> you to what you say yes. later in the year. How about MVP and Defensive Player of the Year predictions from you, Mr. Davis? Well, it could be the same person if I chose Aaron Donald, couldn't it? Because the last couple of years, he's been the Defensive Player of the Year in the NFL and made a strong case to be the MVP overall, even though he hasn't won those. But here's what I'm going to do. Patrick Mahomes won it last year through 50 touchdown passes. He could easily throw 40 touchdown passes and people have called an off year, but it'll still be enough for him to be the MVP. I think this kid is just special. I think he wins it for the second straight year. And then on the defensive side, I'm going with a major surprise. The Tennessee Titans could be a top five defense. Kevin Byard, safety, signed a new contract. He will play and justify that with 10 interceptions. I like it and I won't forget it. We will revisit this. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. On the draw, Connor. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Out of the gun, Dobbs. He's going to air one out. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively, brings up fourth down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Here's Jordan Berry now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. Let's and go. out now, here come the Bengals. And so close to hitting pay dirt last time, fumbling down near the goal line. Now, how does that affect their psyche this time around? It's a tester, that's for sure, because to be that close and come away with no points is really disappointing, not just for the guys on offense, but the defensive players, too, who thought, hey, we're going to put some points up and have a little momentum going. They've got to find a way to just get it out of their minds, let it go, -term memory. and move on to the next series. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. A good pick up there, a 22. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Now a quick slant as the throw's complete. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. And he's got this down to the 35. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 35. 
one of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. First and 10 for Dalton. Complete to the right side, it's Eifert. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the seven. That'll be marked as a 27 yard pickup. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's gonna be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they gotta get ready. It's first and goal. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Cameron Hayward attacking off the edge that time. Well, that was point-counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Dalton with a give here to Mixon. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. We call a lot of games, but we don't normally talk about inside linebackers being that fleet of foot, do we? No, he, he was able to get outside there to make that play. Yeah, and you know what makes them faster? Their ability to read plays, understand what offenses are trying to do, and put themselves in proper position. On third down, Bernard. And here he'll get it down to the seven. It'll be a gain of five on the play, and it'll also be the final play of this third quarter. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Bullock's kick is good. And that now makes this a 15-7 game. Now from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. This will be fielded at the six. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. On first and 10, Downs. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. Give him nine on the play. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. First play of the drive in their hip pocket. Of course, the focus here has to be the touchdown of the two-point conversion. Field goals aren't going to help you. Yeah, but how about that first play of the drive? Just to get them started, nice gain, get some positive momentum going. They're on their way, and they don't have to rush. To throw again on second down, Dobbs. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Dobbs is throwing. Able to hit his tight end, Grimble. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. Disaster there, resulting in a loss of seven on third down. When you lose that kind of yardage on a pass play, you often expect it to be a sack. But that wasn't the case there. They completed the pass. Probably would have been better off just dropping the football and making an incompletion as opposed to catching it and losing that kind of yardage. 
And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. Got to be careful here. Dalton airing one out for Boyd. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. Are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion. And now they'll look at a third and two coming up. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell them to take care of the ball and try and move forward. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Steelers will go on offense here first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Now Dobbs. And complete to Moncrief over the middle. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It's a first down on a gain of 10. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside and break it inside. Really well run route. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. To throw again, Dobbs. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 30. So first and 10 now from the 30. From the gun, Dobbs. And he's out of bounds, almost gets to the 10. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. looking to throw on first down and he'll go down brought down at the 20-yard line and plays like that really hurt play calling they had a really nice gain on the previous play but gave about half the yardage back on the sack 
Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Here's Connor. And a good game here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. Operating from the gun, Dobbs. That's complete, right around the eight. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Here's Dobbs to throw. That is caught. It's Juju for the Steeler touchdown. A seven-yard touchdown grab as they now sit just a two-point conversion away from tying this game up in the fourth quarter. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. A nice-looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are oh, you thinking about Super Bowl 51? Atlanta had the lead against New England, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching it? And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Devin Bush in there to get him. That is the sixth time that they have sacked him tonight. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Now Joe Mixon and an alley to run. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Third and long, what will Dalton dial up? That's complete, Bernard. No gain at all on the play there, and that brings up fourth. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're gonna have to punt it away, trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. 
We'll call that a 43-yard punt, two on the return. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. First down, Dobbs to throw. Over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones in a first down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. From the gun, Dobbs. On the left side, it's McDonald. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. That one good for 26 and a first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. To throw his dives. There goes a deep ball. End zone. And incomplete. He dropped it in the end zone. Trying to erase that deficit all at once. One big shot. He took it. Unfortunately for him, incomplete. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Throwing again. Dobbs throwing the out route incomplete. It's Washington, and he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They'll try and run for it with Connor. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Brandon, this can be so demoralizing for a defense. They've had two opportunities to get off the field. They haven't gotten it done. So now your coordinator, he's going to call every blitz that he has, any type of exotic, something that they haven't seen before. And he's also telling the defensive lineman, don't worry about holding people up. Just get in gaps and try and make a big play. And not only not getting off the field on two, the Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Carlos Dunlap, his second sack of the night. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Darquez Denard there defensively. The out route's such a timing route that sometimes the guy throwing the ball just throws it almost blindly, just kind of counts on that timing winning. And in this case, the ball was batted away. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Operating from the gun. Dobbs, throw left side, complete. It's McDonald. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And his kick is no good. Oh, by the that's slimmest it. of margins, he missed it wide to the left. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. A very good starting field position from the Bengals here as they come up first and 10. Dalton. 
Sutton, first and 10. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The tight end, C.J. Uzama, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 11 yards there, first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Mix it. And he'll get this one across midfield and down into Steeler territory. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. I got you. I got you. They run the counter. Bernard whistles now in a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. So now the Steelers down by two. Just over a minute, 40 to play. A field goal would be a game winner as they come up on first down. Incomplete. He was looking for Dante Moncrief that time. And it's second down. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Back to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Good protection that time, and they couldn't hook up on the long one. Now it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, now third and ten. And first things first, before you think about marching the ball down the field, you got to move the chains. You're exactly right. Got to get back into focus here. Get the first down. That's what's vital to them. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Carl Lawson in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. On fourth down, Dobbs. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And now, boy, the ball's going to go over on downs here inside the 10-yard line. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. 
The Bengals go down to a knee in the victory formation. It's second and goal, back to the eight-yard line now. Dalton down to a knee, and that'll be all she wrote. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, they did in this one. So this one in the win column now for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I tell you, these division games never for the faint of heart, but they come through with a tight victory here on the road. And you find yourself working harder in a game like this too, don't you? Yeah, because palm, you got to stay sweat. with it, right? You got to stay with it. You got to stay locked in. It's our type of a game. And you just mentioned it. Division game on the road, tight, and they find a way to win it. Way to hunker down, as my old coach used to say, and find your way through. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say good night from Pittsburgh.